I'm just there. Uh, starting the stream again, it'll be another five minutes or so. Before we start, I'm just having the remains of my lunch. A few cheese, cheese on crackers. Um, so I'm just going to mute uh, so you don't get the displeasure of listening to me uh, chewing. Welcome back everybody, uh, a Nukes game should start pretty shortly, if you have any uh, any games you'd like to watch, just let us know, um, we're at pretty much match point now, uh, UK needs six and a half wins to clinch uh, the match, so that could happen, 
uh, with ten games in each round. Could happen this next round, could happen round after, or could not happen that at all. Who knows? If it doesn't happen for a while, then uh, it'll be a hell of a comeback. So, uh, yeah, just let us know if you want any games in particular. I'm just finishing off my lunch, so I might uh, be cutting in and out now and then. Uh, I've got two whole two cheese on crackers left and some chocolate. So there you go. Get it best you're, I'm sure you all want to know that. Um, so it looks like we've got a game going, so we'll just join that. As I said, uh, a tiger versus SDWL. So that's uh, who have helpfully closed my uh, window with all the uh, standings on. Uh, so I'll just uh, dump the queue there from Chris. So yeah, I'll just um, get my standings back. Uh, so I'm going to have the remnants of my uh, lunch, so I'll probably be quiet for a little bit. So say this is... Uh, a tiger versus SWL, so that uh, STWL is uh, Chris Cummins uh, representing the UK, and a tiger is Harry Wiggins representing South Africa. And uh, like Sawroids going down, uh, one of those that I have no idea whether it took an S or not, so let's have a look. Let's see what Sawroid is. Sawroid is a type of fish, so it does indeed take an S. I would have absolutely no idea how to challenge it, but it's good. So it's an early lead for uh, uh, Harry. Harry Wiggins, uh, 99 to 43, 56 points the difference. Time for some crackers. Some fairly uh, standard moves, really. And Goy Pongi. Let's have a look at what Pongi means. Pongi Pongi. A uh, Chinese word. It's a uh, thin, soft silk from China. So that's uh, 48 the difference. Uh, bit of a lead for South Africa, but uh, early stages. Bit of the clunky rack here for uh, a tiger. Yeah. Definitely looking to get rid of the F and the B, definitely. Uh, CL, it's a nice combination, so. So, uh, Celeb goes down for 27. So, that sorts out some of the issues. Got FRS left behind. So, and a quick reply of Z, cashing in the Z for 48. Uh, 27 the difference. And it looks like Price C flu or something similar from uh, Tiger, yep, very quickly. And Clunky rack, uh, well, not a cr clunky rack, but an awkward rack. Double I, double R, and the U. So definitely focus on getting rid of R I R U I there. Would be uh, good. Something like ruin, five points even. Uh, figure does that. Does does use the E. Opens up as well. Uh, interesting move. So it uh, looks like a tiger's got merkins to come out. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm pretty sure that means a uh, it's a pubic hair wig from memory. Yeah, a hairpiece for the pubic area. So we could see that go down, but it's uh, not the most common word you'll uh, get to play. So, um, but then again, it's so daft that maybe people know it. Yeah, Merkins. Uh, pretty interesting positional choice. Gone for the left hand side. Um, avoiding. Hmm, it's pretty defensive. I guess the ER is very difficult to hit to the left. 
I mean, yeah, it does tick an S, so possibility there, but interesting choice. So these two, these two particularly uh, Chris on the right, he plays very quickly. So we're getting through the moves pretty quickly. Just gonna have another cracker, so another small hiatus from my commentary. So yeah, a nice play of net here. Quite a few options on that rack. Nitrate, Tertian, Intreated, Rensson, Tartine, with something else to know. Uh, not sure that it was net here was the best. Could have played Straighten off the S and Saroids. And that would have been a better play, but uh, looking fairly academic now anyway, because uh, a Tiger's got uh, the blank there, uh, sitting with uh, Normals. Normal's going to play in at least a couple of places. Marlins, I guess. So yeah, a few options. Merlans. A few options. Uh, yeah, this is live on ISC. This is round uh, 16 of uh, UK versus South Africa. So just the uh, nearly 7... Seven wins for the UK to uh, clinch this match, so looks pretty much like a foregone conclusion, but uh, we never know. And South Africa doing well in this game. 141 points the difference. Let's have a look what uh, Merlans means. So Merlans is uh, the Gaelic word, a narrow mouthed basket. Um, you can have Merlin, uh, so there's a couple of other spellings. You can have it with an, with an I. Uh, extra I in after the A, or you can have it Merlin, um, M U R L I N S rather than A N S. So there you go. But, uh, yeah, looking fairly uh, straightforward this match. Uh, 141 difference, 16 to go. It's only really space at the bottom to realistically bingo let to look horrible. So let's have a switch over to one of the other games and I'm going to uh, try and finish off my chocolate. I'm going to watch some of uh, Tag Ham. So he's bouncing now, he's fairly uh, early stages. So yeah, I'll just have some more chocolate so I'll go quiet for a little bit.
So yeah, a good start for uh, South Africa in this one, Yuma. Uh, Diana, 30, uh, 32 to 52, 50 point leads. <coughs> Early stages, obviously. Uh, Paul on the left, the uh, couple of A's, couple of V's, but a uh, really good wreck towards, uh, heading towards that bonus to uh, give him the edge in this one, but a uh, bit of choice now between uh, how many tiles he wants to play off. Doesn't want to completely wreck that wreck, but uh, he's going to score reasonably well along that A1 column, you'd think. Uh, trying to hit something down there. Something like Nard, huh? It's probably something better, Tade or something. A few options down there. He's going to break up his rack a little bit, but uh, it's probably going to be worth it for the extra points. He's gone for Eend, leaving 18. 34 points. Brings the difference to 16. Uh, Een is a Shakespearean word. Uh, it means to give birth. Uh, same as Yeen with a Y. So there you go. A uh, bit of a clunky rack for Yuma, but uh, yeah, I played a fab. Keeping the blank behind, two B's and F, not brilliant, but uh, sort it out pretty well. And a couple of R's for Paul, a couple of colour bears. So you know the difference. Again, getting close to a bonus. The uh, dump off AR, he's gonna he's gonna have a pretty strong wreck, but obviously he needs to score as well. And uh, so pretty looking at. Par, P A R, both Fab, they can pattern Ab, something like that would be reasonable. Scoring 18 points. He opens things up for his uh, rack, for his bonus friendly rack. Obviously, we, can, we know that uh, Yuma has a blank, so it's probably going to help Yuma out ultimately, but uh, you can't worry too much about what your opponent has. You're going to work to what you've got. Uh, and Something like par seems reasonable in that respect. Very difficult to do too much here um, without leaving two ears. So yeah, par goes down. It's a fairly standard move. But, uh, as you can see, it's going to make things a little bit easier for uh, Yuma uh, to slot in a bonus par. Take lots of hooks. And helpful ones here be T, obviously, part. Para, as in the uh, Parachute, paramilitary, all that sort of thing. P A R A. We've also got the E hook, the S hook. So yeah, it's gonna give uh, lots of uh, options. And down goes batsman. So uh, 78 gives it a 99 point lead for Yuma. As you can see, tag hair is gonna hit back here, uh, draw on the blank themselves. So 99 point lead, but it's gonna come down to about 20, 20 to 30 after this move. Just a case of what bonus is going to go down here? Lots of options. Yeah, ideally, you want to play to the left of batsmen. Um, doesn't look anything particularly fantastic. I guess you could play something through the B, um, an able word, A B L E words in the top right, maybe possible. Um, but yeah, you're probably going to, want to focus on uh, the column 12 for bonuses here, see what you can slot in. Uh, I guess if you want to go a bit more defensive, you could sort of go with the largest and uh, from C5, making Spar and Tab. Uh, but he's gone for Tangler, which is fair enough. A bit more points, 70 points. Brings it down to 29. And a bit viral heavy for uh, Yuma. Couple of eyes. Uh, this, again, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, there's a nice word there, Ciba, C E I B A, which uh, stands out, but um, whether it's in uh, Yuma's range of uh, word knowledge, I don't know. Uh, but that'd be, that stands out a mile um, as, the, as a sort of nice balancing rack because uh, you, you're hitting that triple letter with a C and getting it doubled again. So so Ciba would be about 30 points. Uh, that would tick all the boxes, really. Um, but that's pretty. Uh, it's quite a high level word, so not a lot of people would know it. Um, Seba, 30. Um, if you don't see that, you're probably not going to score a great deal. So yeah, um, 
So Seal does sort of similar things, but obviously not the same score. 12 points. Uh, it does leave an A behind, but uh, because the R is pretty friendly towards vowels and so on, it was quite a, a strong bonus heavy leave. So it's 41 points of difference. Uh, tag him with the Q as the Z. Uh, definitely didn't want to say the Q, but um, pretty eyeing up uh, Kenat or Trank or something like that uh, to go in that H row through AN, but. Uh, is there anything, I don't think, um, that's a, thinking of a move ahead really, the Q is a real pain with this rack, it's pretty much one where you, you're just going to have to ignore the Q, I think you can't really do anything with it, don't seem to be any QI spots, actually it seems to be quite a lot, there's not many I's gone, so there's a seven I's left here, so chances are you're going to pick an I out, so you're going to have this QI in the top right, uh, A14 with the B, obviously it's going to open up other options, but uh, you're just looking to get rid of that Q as quick as, as soon as possible, really. Um, there should be some potential for that Z. This is a big hot spot um, with J10, but he's gone for Xanti. Uh, he's just hoping to pick up something with that Q, I think. Um, but Xanti's brought it back within two points. Um, Yuma's leave, um, this is a bit, um, bit Val heavy and it's not really worked out. Picked out the S though, so. Really, you're only a, a move or ideally a move away from getting a bonus here. Just play off a couple of vowels uh, more if you can. But uh, leaving rays, for instance, dumping off AI would be very strong leave. Although the board's not brilliant for bonusing, but there's two S spots. You've got uh, the, the spa place at uh, C10. So you've got the S there, you've got Tangler, so you know your S bonuses are going to play. Um, I don't agree with playing airy. Um, that wrecks the wrecked far too much. You're, just better, you're far better playing AI off. AI off. And it's going to score pretty much the same. You play rear or TAI or whatever. AI. and This is a bit more aggressive playing AI there, but just play off AI basically. Or AIA. Um, is far stronger than that. You don't want to. You, Playing off the R is unnecessary. The R is a great combination with your rack. Maybe she's worrying about uh, defense, but given the score line, it's not necessarily, I don't think. And uh, the other thing was all those eyes uh, were waiting in the pack, and um, yeah, uh, Yuma's found them, and it's changed pretty quickly. I think pretty changed the Y as well, and a couple of eyes. So back on turn with um, Tag Ham with Paul. Uh, UK leading this one, 24 points ahead. Still got that Q, that nuisance Q, still no I um, to play it. But uh, Paul just taking the points, and as you can see, it's uh, working pretty well. He's gone from behind to 54 points up now, but uh, uh, Yuma is playing. Maybe Yuma kept the Y back there, which was a uh, very strange. Uh, option. I'm not sure why you'd want to keep the Y back there, but uh, yeah, kept the Y back by looks of things because there's only one of them, so must have kept the Y. Um, but uh, yeah, they definitely got a good uh, potential for a bonus here. Just need to play off the Y really. Y and a vowel um, seems like the obvious thing to do. Um, a little bit limited with. With what 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 can uh, what sort of scores are available on this board? It's a it's a pretty um, kind of boxy board. Um, very kind of linear. There's like two places for bonuses. Um, a lot of it is shut. I mean, yeah, you can you could get bonuses through the from the N in horn and through the R and Tangler and the T and Zanti, but it's a pretty linear board. It's a pretty dry board. There's only really place to score is around here, this top left corner. But you need to hit you need to, you need ease basically to do that. And so Yuma's played Yon for twenty. They're uh, keeping a strong lead, but again there, there's lots of eyes to come so you do worry that she's picked up, but she hasn't. She's done well. She's uh, avoided all the extra eyes but uh Paul's finally got that that U to go with the Q and he's managed to play it off and uh, 
played it off well for 48 quern. And so it's a 78 point lead now. Um, running away with it a little bit now, Paul. Uh, quern is a hand operated stone mill for grinding corn. Um, so yeah, and the other good thing about uh, Quern was it, it kind of obscures that uh, S hook for Tangler. Um, Yuma took out the other S hook when she played Yon, so it's all of a sudden gone pretty hard, uh, pretty difficult to get those S bonuses down now. So it's looking tricky for Yuma. Um, love to get rid of that K, I guess, but again, there's, there's no real place to score on this board. Just that top left, but without ease, you don't really. It's hard to access. There's a lot of uh, kind of clunky rubbish to come, uh, and you need to be. This is one of those games where you need. To, I mean, you you always need to check your, your tile tracking or what what tiles to come, because this has a big indicate. It, it has a big dictation on on how you play this game. I mean, there's three L's. Um, you're, de you're trying to get rid of eyes as quickly as you get them, basically, because otherwise you might end up with two or three very quickly. Um, so those are kind of factors. Ooh, nice. So, um, so o OK goes down for in the top left corner. Uh, making it Uke. Uh, 28. Brings Yuma back in a little bit. Um, and quick reply of Dins from Tagham. Um, again, trying to push that lead into... Uh, beyond the kind of the bonus um, lead. So Dean's played very quickly and then Adieu's played soon after. Paul now the X to score with to try and wrap this game up. Seven in the bag so he knows he's going to he's not going to get uh, double bonus because there may be enough tiles left. 73 the difference. Um, very kind of ugly Unseen pool. So not a lot to worry about from uh, Paul's perspective, particularly as he has the X to score with. He knows he's going to get at least three different triple letters available with his X. He's got the N for Nix, Tix, uh, Tix, and there's the E <coughs> for X. <coughs> so yeah, the X is a guaranteed 25 plus on this board. And. Uh, so it's going to be pretty handy to try and uh, ensure against any bonuses, which seem increasingly unlikely now. So yeah, Paul just plays ticks for 26. And that's a pretty clunky rack for Yuma. So yeah, Yuma just plays uh, evil. Uh, so it's game over, really. Um, uh, sort of 84 the difference, but with part of play it looks pretty much impossible. Well, it's a, the unseen aren't too bad, but and of course Paul does have the J, so he has to li be a little bit careful of uh, some sort of unlikely uh, uh, bonus um, underneath Quern. Trying to see what's available. I mean, um, is anything at all that could play underneath? Uh, it's really difficult because um, needs to be like I R or I S to uh, hit underneath. Or I S, yeah, I S E or something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, Jude is totally safe. There's no A's or o O's or A's to, to go underneath it, so. Unless uh, something begins with an S and then hits the H here, or. Yeah, it's, it's a game over, really. Um, nicely wrapped up by Paul. It's one of those games where Paul ran away with it without uh, bonus it. I mean, after Tangler, it was uh, Yuma to play. Paul was still 20 behind, and now he's over 100 up, and he hasn't even. He's not bonused, so. It shows you what you can do um, without the bonus sometimes. Just a succession of 
thirties and forties were enough to uh, run away with this game. So it's another game towards the UK. Um, and getting close to that uh, that target of 100.5 to win the overall uh, UK versus South Africa match. So let's um, let's swap to one of the other games. And again, if, if anybody in chat wants to point me to a, to a close game or anything like that, just uh, shout us out. So uh, yeah, Deco Lady soon. Uh, Natalie says her look. end game might clinch the necessary win. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, so we're at uh, the uh, close game, 391 to 370. Uh, Natalie Salty versus Howard Rayner. Uh, looking, yeah, it looks like uh, Platter is going to go down here. Um, from 14E. That could do it. Uh, Platter could uh, win this game for. Uh, Howard. Uh, not the easiest of spots. Uh, E14. It's a four way overlap. But uh, yeah, I would expect uh, Howard to see it. But it's one of those I uh, uh, guess you might get uncertain of it. Uh, let's have a look at the unseen pool. Uh, didn't load up for some reason. Oh, wow. Mr. Platter. Um, might it work out though? Mm. LG. So yeah, Howard's took a five point lead. I think. Uh, yeah, Platter would have won. I think. Uh, would it have blocked Gated? Yeah. Uh, would have blocked Gated. Um, Pirate is. Party is blocked Gated as well, obviously. But uh, Natalie can score enough for Getter. 32 points. 27 the difference so with uh, 27 with with three three on the rack of, of Natalie and uh, this needs to be a 21 point outplay for uh, Howard to tie or 22 to win uh, seems pretty unlikely yeah it looks like uh, Natalie's gonna nick this one yeah and Platter is a big miss yeah I'm pretty sure Platter would have won it's a shame but yeah, how it just took the loss. So that's going to be uh, 423 to 410. Uh, to the UK, so that's another win. So that's two we've seen from this round. So it's going to take UK to 96. Um, let's have a look at the other rounds. Um, a lot of games are probably in. Um, I could just try and look through them. Um, juggling my windows around. Uh, easier said than done. So... So we know um, Natalie won. Um, so let's go on to them in sequence. So Mitsurugi. Um, they just start in the next game. Um, so let's have a look at the last one. So yeah, Mitsurugi won his last one. Uh, whoops. Um, yeah, so Mitsurugi won the last one. Um, uh, Paul Allen won. Uh, I'll just double check that. So many games, I forget them all. Um, so yeah, Paul Allen won, Natalie won, so that's three. Um, next one's Andy Goodwin, did he win? He did, so that's four. Uh, let's have a look at the high tower. Um, high tower, there we are. Uh, so that's four, high to one, that's five. Unless they're still playing other. Um, there's Rick next. Rick. Rick one, yes, yeah, so that's six. So that would take it to a hundred. So let's have a look, see if any of the others won. So that's Bob next. Bob. Bob lost. Uh. Um, Chris lost, so that leaves Colin Northmore and Chris Vickery. Uh, Colin, Colin won, so that makes it seven. So that would make it to 101 if everything's right. And uh, Chris Vickery, uh, where is he? 
there we are. So yeah, um, Chris lost. So that was a seven seven three round. I make it. Um, not confirmed yet, but I'm going to check. I think pre all the results are in. So I'm going to just double check with the uh, with the standing. See if it's uh, updated. Uh, see if my maths was right. If I remembered. Uh, no, it's not updated yet. But I think that's they're going to be 101 to 53 after this round goes in. But I could be wrong. I could have looked at a game that was from the previous round or whatever. Well, excuse me. So, um, yeah, we're just waiting to see confirmation on whether uh, UK have won. Uh, it's not updated on mine yet. Um, see if there's anything in chat. I might have missed it when I uh, accidentally uh, refreshed my page. But I think... I'm, I think I think it's going to be 101 to 53. So it's an unconfirmed scoreline after round 16. And here we go. Oh, no. It's the, it was a 6 4 round, so I must have looked it in all the game. So the results are in. Uh, not quite there yet. Uh, so. We'll try and find whoever plays. <laughs> try and find who wins the next round. So it's gone. It was a, a 6 4 round. So 100 to 60 is the new score. So I'm going to update that on the screen. So 100 to the UK, 60 to South Africa. So who do you think. Who do we want to bet on who will uh, get the, uh, the, the, the uh, clinching tie or win? Who do we want to bet on? I'm guessing it's going to be uh, my my uh, my odds are on uh, Chris because he plays so fast. Chris Cummins, so we'll watch that game. And yeah, he's he's leading. So uh, again, if uh, anybody who's looking at other games on ISC, uh, do let me know if any of them are closer to finishing. But uh, yeah, we'll try and get whoever whoever's looking like getting the the win first. Uh, just let me know. Try and uh, watch that one. But, yeah, looking good for uh, Chris after a slurred. Uh, but uh, Neil does have a blank on his rack, so it looks like he should be able to hit back with a bonus, as a bonus of his own. Uh, 78, 79 the difference. Don't mind me, I'm just having some more chocolate. Got a bit uh, crazy with the chocolate after it uh, didn't have any of the, the galaxy chocolate for those uh, little bars. Didn't have them in anywhere for weeks and weeks and weeks since Brexit as it happened. Since the Brexit became official in the end of January. Couldn't find them anywhere. And all of a sudden, oh, there's some. So I was uh, living on, uh, well, not living on it, but uh, eating loads of uh, dairy milk instead. But I uh, can't beat Galaxy. So yeah, it should be. I'm thinking there might be a double double here. Um, Yeah, three, three to choose from, but all pretty um, fairly obscure. So certainly not um, a gimme any of these. Oh yeah. In terms of uh, in terms of pl uh, probability, all pretty low. Um, probably the the high, the highest probability um, for blank is a T. Uh, but yeah, there are three double doubles here. But uh, yeah. None of them are gimmies, all pretty tricky. See if you can find the one I think you need an R, a T is the blank, or a G is a blank. Of course, now I've told you the blank has to be a G, it probably makes it a little bit easier.
So yeah, I mean, I guess... So South Africa just need to basically win the remaining 40 games. Um, just, all, just all 40 games. Um, and the spread is 5,263, so... Yeah, just that spread to need to catch up as well. So yeah. Bit of a tough ask, but uh, you never know. I think we're in the realms of uh, astronomic probability at this stage. Because you know that uh, once uh, Neil plays one of his bonuses, it's probably going to uh, be met with an almost instant response from Chris. So let's have a look at let's have a look at drift around while uh, we wait for this play. See if there's any uh, games further ahead. So you can stretch that. Uh, so it's pretty much even there. Uh, Rick on the left, represent the UK. Diane on the right, pretty even. Uh, And a little bit more advanced there. But again, both e dead even now. 185 each. Between Gerald and uh, Orgal on the right. Let's uh, have a look around Ike. Against uh, Natalie. That's a very early, very even game. A look elsewhere. Another even game, pretty much. None of them um, looking too far advanced yet. Uh, a little bit further ahead there. Some nice uh, words played. Scouries, bakeries, zechin. An extra five there. Um, we also be seeing Goldilocks. Let's have a look at Goldilocks. That's very early, so probably not going to be that one. That's the clinch, clinching the uh, the victory for UK. And Steve G, I think that's the last one. Oh, and a tiger. And that's not started yet, so it's only just started. Oh, yeah, look at uh, So, yeah, that, that's looking good for Bob there. The UK team, 117 points ahead. So let's go back to uh, Chris's game, Chris Cummins and Neil. Oh. Uh, so what happened there? Oh dear. So um, yeah, Neil's missed um, bonuses with that with that rack. The, th the three uh, double doubles were um, uh, Burgages, uh, which is a kind of uh, Burgage is a kind of feudal tenure. Um, <clears throat> there is um, Garbiers, a uh, French word, a kind of soup, and a uh, barguest. Um, is a dog-like goblin whose appearance, whose appearance portends death. There you go. Glad you'll all, all be to, uh, uh, happy to hear that uh, in uh, various quarantines all over the world. There you go, Richie. So, yeah, um, so unfortunately you didn't uh, hit any of the bonuses and a couple of dumping players be and so on. And uh, see so Chris has got down tardier. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it looks... I'm guessing this game, given uh, Neil has about five minutes left, so um, I'm guessing this game will end in about six minutes' time, because Chris will only spend like another t minute or two. So even though it's not very far advanced in terms of tiles, it's probably in terms of time expired, it's probably uh, it's going to finish in ten minutes, I reckon. So that's my best bet so far. I could be wrong. Again, if you see any games that are, are about to uh, finish in favour of the UK, let me know. Try and uh, get that uh, that moment when the UK clinches the victory. So again, it's uh, there's uh, a few uh, definitely options with uh, double doubles, but. Uh, Sergius um, looking uh, possibility, but uh, Huggius goes down. Neil, so it's uh, brought the game back a bit closer now. It's uh, 
51 the difference. Chris to go next. Um, slightly awkward, but uh, plays Vector. Uh, dumps those CVT, bit of an awkward combination. Basically, Bounce the Rack keeps a nice wide open board. So it's 77 the difference. And not the best of pickups for Neil. He's got a, some scoring options for the H and Y. So, uh, should be a few options to score 25, 30 or so, but uh, not looking great for bonus potential immediately. Dotty goes down to 27. Well, could have played Hotty as well for another 6, but uh, it's come down quickly. Another quick reply from Chris. Uh, PIS in the bottom left corner. 70 the difference. Just going to quick uh, skimming at the other games, make sure none have finished. Yeah, they're all going still. So, yeah, about heavy stuff for, uh, for Neil, but uh, a little bit more towards a bonus now. A little bit uh, push for time, perhaps. Um, that's a little bit. Uh, you need to uh, play more vowels off there, really. Um, vector, the the H position here, D15, could have played off Ho, for instance, H O E, something like that. Um, which is going to be a lot better, even though the score's more or less the same. Um, that extra vowel being played off is quite a bit valuable. Keeping four vowels and one consonant is pretty uh, not helpful, really. Um, it's pretty. It's unlikely to mature into anything. It's just going to mature into this. At least with three vowels and one consonant, you're a lot better. You're a lot nearer a good, a good board. A lot nearer to a bonus rack than you were with four vowels and one consonant. It's like that. That extra vowel is probably worth minus five points to your rack. I would estimate. I mean, you can check on um, cross tables, leave a value here. So it's a good, um, good link to look at. See what difference uh, an extra vowel makes to something like if you leave, I don't know, A E O N and add an extra vowel to it, it's probably minus five, minus eight, depending on whether it's a duplicate or not. It's in that sort of region, I expect so. But uh, yeah, a few quick players on and critter, double double for 36 for Chris. And uh, yeah, extend that lead a little bit. Quick reply of con. So it's an 84 point game. So, UK player Chris, uh, SDWL, represent the UK. Looking likely to uh, clinch this, just a case of uh, whether one of the other UK players finishes their game ahead or not. As I say, Chris is very quick, so I'm expecting this to be over within five minutes. Uh, and half of that time will be his opponents. Um, Chris won't bother going through which of his 12 minutes, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, AG goes down. 106 points the difference. Uh, awkward Q pickup. Uh, but it's not too bad. It's got Canet from A8. It's a pretty decent uh, 45 points, if you can spot it. It's easy to get to... Um, with Under this time pressure, it's easy to miss things like that, though. Maybe just... You might see Cat, but not see Canet. We might see QIN. Um, okay, what happens? Oh, AG, played AG. Then it instant reply of OB it. Well, yeah, um, that was a bad move. Missed off Canet and Cat. Um, definitely don't want to keep the Q, so QIN goes down now. Quick reply of Fox from Chris. And 140 points, the difference. So it looks like this is going to be. The clinching game just makes sure there aren't any uh, other games uh, there's people getting disconnected, but uh, yeah, all all games are ongoing. So this look one looks like it's going to be the uh, the clincher because it looks it's going to be over in a couple of minutes. But if uh, you see any other games finishing, let me know. But uh, yes, this looks like the, the game. It's a uh, clinch of victory for the UK team. Full uh, 
Pre uh, best part of 12 hours, 13, 14 hours of Scrabble over the two days. Obviously, we've still got another four rounds, uh, th three rounds after this one. So, but uh, yeah, long haul, but uh, well deserved from the UK team. 137 points the difference. Some uh, nice seven letter words with that rack, but some look like they're going to play anywhere. Inhaler, internial for uh, Neil. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much dead board now. Four, la four tiles to go. Even a bonus wouldn't make any difference at this stage. Got a quick, uh, quick dump of H. Um, Chris has Wadsouls and Wadless, maybe? Wadsouls, I think it's good. No, no, it's not good. No bonus there in my mind. So yeah, uh, just cash in the S. Man replied. It's just, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a, this is how Chris builds up his spread. So he, he catches people on the, um, so you think Neil Neil could have took his extra minute because he was going to go into it anyway. And he actually has an out bonus here as a uh, lankier, a raggy in the bottom left corner. But uh, as I say, it's not going to make any difference. It's uh, academic at this point, and uh, Hank is um, hmm, interesting. Um, yeah, I've challenged off. Yeah, no such Hank, but uh, it's, it's all academic. 201 points. Lankier would have been a nice outplay, but uh, not to be for uh, Neil. So uh, can uh, can Chris go out with his PL anywhere on this board? I just double check there aren't any other games. Yeah, all the games are live, so. Once this one's over, it's going to be it for the UK team. Plash, I think, would work. Yep, Plash. Plash goes down. Ten points. Five points challenge penalty. 497 to 295 to the UK. And that clinches the victory for the UK team. They have now won 101 games. So of the 200 games, they've won more than half. That means the UK wins... Uh, the ISC showdown or challenge or whatever you want to call it uh, between the UK and the South African team. So well done to the UK team. They're winners. 101 to 60. And um, we're going to keep watching all the remaining games, but uh, well done to the UK. Uh, and uh, sealed with uh, this victory here, watched uh, live by uh, ooh, hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, um, so well done to Chris. He gets a little bit of glory there by getting the win. But it's uh, a sealed victory for the UK team. Uh, well done to the UK team. And uh, preservations to South Africa. They put up a good fight. But the uh, UK just too strong at the end. So that's uh, 101 to 60. I'll update the scorecard and it uh, becomes more official for you. Here we go. So there you go. We had that win. 101 to 60. So the winning line was 100.5. So well done to the UK team. Uh, let's join one of the other games. Uh, Yeah, this one looks like a convincing win for uh, Howard on the South African side. So let's say it's a fairly straightforward win, it looks like. Pretty dead board. You've got Vore at the top, but it uh, doesn't look like there's any bonus playable on this rack, so it should be all over. But there's still a slight chance, but uh, I think that's unlikely. But uh, let's have a look at the next game. Uh, Mitsuyugi and Gerald. Mm. Interesting game, 45 points in it. Again, pretty blocked board, this is fairly standard. Um, 
Paul Gallon on the right. So he likes to uh, he's very good at kind of boxing boards in. Just the way he uh, plays. He likes to keep things relatively controlled. So uh, you tend to get a lot of boards like this when you play him. So we'll look at the next game. Uh, Natalie said. Uh, Natalie is winning convincingly there. Uh, 144 points. Uh, Ike with uh, dirigers, but uh, I'm not sure that plays anywhere. Um, it's a frustrating position for Ike. Uh, let's have a look at the square. Uh, Chris Vickery. Chris is up by 59 against uh, Maddie. Uh, got the blank, but uh, not really about bonusing when you're ahead, just need to. Uh, Control the board really, uh, and uh, well, we're in the end game phase anyway. Uh, so it looks like uh, Solomon with the the Y I I G S, but uh, yeah, there's a win for Chris coming up. Let's have a look elsewhere. Let's have a look at Fazia Rick Rick Kennedy. Ooh, this is a tight game. Let's follow the end of this one. So uh, Yuma, uh, that's Diana, the South African side to play. Two in the bag, pretty reasonable-ish rack, but uh, not great for scoring. Let's have a look at what's unseen. Ooh, lots of uh, potential things to come in the bag. So it's a case of do you look for a try and go out in one, uh, well, go out in two, or do you go for a uh, try and pick one of the big tiles, score well with that. Because uh, there's a seven on that rack, but it doesn't get players anywhere, does it? Uh, yellow doesn't look like it. So yeah, um, interesting position. Do you say? Do you go for a to go out in two? Uh, I think that's probably the best strategy, but it's a lot. It's it's very hard to do that um, when. When there's two in the bag, it's much harder to do it with two in the bag than one in the bag. Because you don't know what two like you can pick up anything you pick up. Two constants, two vowels, so it's very hard to plan play it out accurately in any way, you kind of Whereas if you're gonna pick one tile then it's a lot it's a lot easier to predict and to kind of play through the permutation, so interesting position. Um in terms of the board, there's not really great places to score. Um, to kind of play to to play off the V's and the F, F and the P and the X. Um, so yeah, I think if you could go out in two, you would win pretty much. But any of those letters could mess things up. So yeah, interesting position. One of those that's uh, very hard to really. <clears throat> gauge without uh, lots of computer analysis. Even even if you look at it through, uh, you know, like the program, you you struggle to be clear and concise about what you think is the best move. <clears throat> It'd still be very much up, to, up for debate. Um, I guess another option is we're trying to look, see if you can set anything up for yourself, which your opponent can't do anything with. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, interesting. You could uh, if you if you put an e on the end of t. Um, there are no hook. Your opponent there's no. Your opponent can't extend this. If you if you create that opening, your opponent, you know, Rick doesn't have any letters to go on after it. So that could be useful. Um, could play something like a, a Glee, um, for instance. Um, 
yeah, Glebe would have worked, or G, or whatever. Um, lots of options there. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that probably would have worked out better than Teg, because Teg, Teg takes a U. So, um, Tegu would work. Tegu and XU. Uh, it's gonna, you're going to give that away a lot of the time, like more than half the time. You're going to give away XU for 42 points. Um, so you basically, even if you go out, um, which doesn't look likely, um, yeah, it's just a bad play because it's sex up teg Tegu. T E G U. So you pretty much you, the chances of going out um, with with six tiles are pretty tough. So yeah, that was that was a tough it was a tough position. Um, but yeah, definitely tag is bad. But to create that opening, definitely it, it's counterintuitive to to create T W E uh, T W E because you just think. You're, always, your opponent's always going to have something to extend that. But as it happens, whatever Rick had, he couldn't extend TEE. Now to give him a huge headache by playing that. Uh, particularly if you picked out the X, for instance. If you play TEE, then you've got locks, knocks, and everything else for similar score, score 40, 39, whatever, 42. Um. So you're in a good good shape if you pick out the X. Um, and even if you don't pick out the X, you've still got lots of um, scoring threat. Even with the one point, as you're getting kind of, you know, reasonable score. Um, with Rife, Rife takes an R, so you've got potential for some uh, more of an extended overlap, if it works out. Right, uh, Rifer and say um, Urn or something like that. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, Jen wasn't the right player. Um, but it was a it's a tricky situation. It's one of the, it takes lots and lots of uh, thinking time to uh, process that one. Um, and uh, Rick had a pretty good rack to to sort of. I mean, it would have been tough to, to, to win against Rick's rack, because Rick didn't have the V, um, which is one of the awkward tiles. Um, I think there was a P in the bag as well. So there were two kind of, I think P, PV was in the bag. So yeah, it was a pretty awkward pickup, uh, whatever you did, really. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think um, G, G double E, or... Glee or anything like that would have made it interesting. Um, real? Uh, no, probably, yeah, you want to keep the R back, I guess. Um, but yeah, there, definitely something along those lines would have made it interesting. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a win for Rick as long as he doesn't play any 40s, just plays foot. Uh, next, the uh, scoreline uh, 453 to 425. Uh, just a P to dump off for uh, Yuma, for Diana. So it's going to be, yeah, I mean, P's going to score pretty well. Um, 17 with a Z, but uh, not quite enough to catch Rick, fortunately. Uh, it, was, I mean, it was a good sequence, Revolt and Zep, but uh, yeah. It was the gen play it made it too easy for Rick to score. Um, you basically needed to pick out the U. Which uh, two in nine shot, uh, not that great odds really. And even if if if, if the U is in the bag, then it's possible to just parallel from uh, I fifteen and play off a load of tiles, kill that spot. And leave yourself a nice out. So you might, even if you do pick it up, you there's no guarantee you're going to win anyway. So, so yeah, uh, well done to Rick anyway. UK team wins that one. So let's have a look at some of the games. Um, mostly done for this round, I think. I think there's three games left. 
Uh, I think uh, there's eight game we were looking at. That's the next round. It's round uh, 18, is it? Yeah, 18. Uh, so we might watch that one. Let's have a look, see if the other games are just finishing off. Ooh, nice. Infighter. That's a nice play from uh, Midas Touch. Yeah, uh, Llewellyn Jiggles. So yeah, Infighter. Um, there's a nine letter word. Looks things. And challenge, naturally. Uh, yeah, nice moves in that one. Uh, oh, coronets as well. To, it's a nice fit through the uh, underneath the uh, G uh, G G A U. So yeah, let's see. That really, that was the, uh, the clincher in fighter and regrant to level things up. Um, in fighter, a big player then. Coronets. Although any any bonus really like coronets and it was, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was a big play from uh, from Midas Touch from Llewellyn, so well played. It's uh, still not over yet, so uh, so we'll just see the end of it. So uh, still a chance that uh, Colin could have Trolland, which I think was played yesterday. Trollands. So uh, yeah, good play, good play to block that from uh, Luella, Minus touch. It uh, um, means Trolland won't play underneath with ST, and so that's pretty much uh, game over. So it's a win for the South African side. But as I say, the big, biggest story in this round is that uh, UK have clinched uh, the title, uh, winning the one game they needed. Uh, Chris um, Cummins winning that game. And to take uh, UK past that uh, 100.5 mark to make the get the score 101 to 60. Uh, still more all the other games in this round to add to it. So uh, we'll continue till uh, everything finishes. Still another three rounds after this one finishes. I think this is probably the last game uh, in the round. Round 17. Three to go after it. See, uh, we'll try and uh, give you an updated score once all this result goes in. Uh, we'll give you the standings, individual standings. Not much change there. Um, Paul Allen still only lost the two games, 14 and 2 for the UK. That's uh, Tagham. Uh, Paul Gallen um, for UK, Mitsurugi on 13 and 3. Uh, Chris Vickery for UK, 12 and 4. Uh, Andrew Goodwin, Andrew 001, uh, 11 5, uh, Colin Northmore, Harry Wigan, South Africa, Natalie Zolte, UK, and Steve Gru Stephen Grudz, South Africa, and Rick Kennedy, UK, all on 10 and 6. That was after round 16. So those will all update after this game. There's uh, one with the team standings. So yeah, this game's pretty much just uh, playing out the ending. It's going to be a win for uh, Midas Touch. Again, lots of nice uh, four, four bonuses there with Scarries, Regrant, Infighter, the nine-letter nine word, and uh, Coronets, nice little uh, fit through the underneath the, the J and the U. For 98, uh, difference really. Just the one bonus for Colin from Bakeries. Uh, big players with the, the Z and the Q, but not enough that barrage bonuses at the end. As uh, given the given my just touch the win in this one. So down goes Ilya, keeping the Y back. Go up with the next turn. Go 
Colin, not much you can do with the four cocktails. Apologies for my uh, creaky chair. So down goes Dalt for 13 and uh, Midas Touch finishes it off with the Y just on the top left hand corner. So that's 478 to 398, uh, 395, the 83 point went for South Africa. So I think that was the last of the games for uh, round uh, 17. So we give you an up up uh, updated scoreline. Um, updated scoreline for everybody to uh, keep an eye on. But uh, yeah, it's all all over uh, as far as the UK versus South Africa as a contest goes. UK have won it. Um, so we just played it the last few games to give you a final score. Um, We'll also update you on the uh, individual standings since they're, they're still live. Always interesting to see uh, who wins that. So uh, let's uh, watch a bit of uh, one of the games. Uh, yeah, we'll start off that one. Uh, Tag Ham and Goldilocks. Uh, and uh, good start. Early start looks like with uh, gyrates and graced for Tag Ham to come down. Just a case of where do you play them? Graced and gyrates. Leam is a, a verb, I think, to light, to enlighten or make illuminate, I guess. So, yeah, we're going to see a bonus down, I'm pretty sure. But uh, a lot of different options as where you play it. Lots of sort of underlaps or overlaps. Do you just take the extra points with the the lean hook? Interesting to see how uh, uh, Paul plays it. So yeah, the uh, <coughs> round seventeen results are all in, and uh, that was a six for round for uh, UK. So it's now 106 to 64, but as I say, UK have already won. Hopefully the, uh, <laughs> the um, I don't have to uh, reformat that uh, box. Let me have a look, see what it looks like with the extra digit in there. Ah, oh, we're good, we're good. <laughs> I was ready to uh, screw up the alignment, but there you go. So there you go. Um, yeah. So UK have already won. Has uh, gone past that uh, benchmark. One hundred and five. Let's have a look at the uh, individual standings to round seventeen. So, uh, so Paul Allen lost his game. So, so there's now two two players at the top. Fourteen and three. Uh, Paul Gallen, that's Mitsurugi, and Paul Allen. That's Tag Ham, they're both on 16-3. Uh, Paul Gallen has the the better spread by 439. So um, in, in third place, Chris Vickery. Um, that's just C. Vickery uh, in backwards on ISC. 13-4. Uh, plus uh, their spreads. Chris's spread is kind of in between the two. So And then... Five players on eleven and six. So from the UK, Natalie Zolte, Rick Kennedy, and Andrew Goodwin, and from South Africa, uh, Harry Wiggins and Stephen Grunst. So it's uh, Harry Wiggins is uh, a tiger, and uh, Stephen is Steve G. So and everybody else ten and seven or worse. Uh, Colin Northmore ten and seven, and everybody else is a, a losing record after that. So. So there you go, that's the results. Uh, there's only three rounds to go. This is third to go. Oh, stagery, I didn't think of that one. Yeah, stagery, so yeah, well played. Uh, easily overlooked, obviously. Stagery, graced, and gyrates. 
So yeah, hit stage was nice. Um, interesting response from Goldilocks. I didn't see their rack properly. Uh, did they mean to? Uh, was that meant to be a long cover? I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, that's a strange play, to say the least. I don't know if they mistyped or something. I don't know. I wasn't. I didn't see the the rack. So, but, uh, yeah. Interesting. So uh, triple A for Paul. Well, um, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, Hetero is given plenty of uh, ability to uh, do something there. One score and get rid of a couple of A's. So. All good. So yeah, down goes uh, Bar as in the sheep. So yeah, I'm not sure what happens with their draw move. There must have been a, a typo or something. Uh, uh, clunky rack now for Goldilocks. Uh, plays Quack for 40. Sort out a lot of issues. Could have gone for uh, burning the blank with Heteros and something from uh, J14, but uh, yeah, it makes sense to just play Quack. And as you saw, um, Tycam still has the S, so I'm pretty sure we're going to see a play on the Quacks here. Uh, Uh, something like idiots or idiots quacks or maybe some better orders maybe I don't know. Uh, what else is there? I mean, Id ideally you'd want to keep one of the constants back, um, so you're not too val heavy. So like Ordist leaves AI, which isn't ideal. Does it the double double line score, which is a nice bit of extra points, but uh, if you're looking for something that's uh, not so constant, uh, not so vowel heavy, or assuming there's no bonus. So let's have a look at what options there are. What well, the long words you play? I guess there's uh, the otters. Another option. Uh, Play something like stayed. Keep things tight. Uh, yeah, nothing. We're all kind of uh, stoi. S T O A I. Um, that would have been an option too. Keep an ID, but uh, yeah, we're all much. Much of a muchness, really. Uh, all six and two threes. And Goldilocks hits back with frabbing. Let's have a look at that one, see what it means. Frabbing is a dialect word, and it means to worry. So, frabbing, yeah. Uh, nicely spot, uh, spotted in there, uh, spotting the ING uh, lane there. Somewhat obscured by the QU, but um, spotted it nicely. So, 79 points. Brings the game back within reach, 24 the difference. And uh, the Z's going to give a few scarred options with this rank. The Fusil kind of sticks out, F U Z I L. But uh, yeah, I think that would that fits pretty nicely with E double L from uh, J4. You know, nicely there. That's the kind of thing you're drawn to immediately with that rank. Um, you could play something like Dursey, um, another option. Uh, I if I could type. There you go. Dursey, the other alternative. Uh, I guess it scores more here, but it's more dangerous. Not for me. Not much difference. Going for Dursey. Okay. So, uh, Fusil. Fusil is a type of musket. Flintlock musket. Uh, I'm sure some of the scrabblers will have used one at some point. 
Uh, Dursey is a Hindi word, uh, a Hindu tailor. So that's a bit more stylish. Uh, so down goes, ooh, what's a back to back bonuses for Goldilocks. I'm just giving a little bit of an edge. 2 2 3 to 2 1 2, it's an 11 point game. Tag here, though, picked out the blank. Got a lot of clunky rubbish to go with it, but uh, got an easy uh, play with the J jig top right. Uh, I'm not sure if there's much else uh, with this one. But uh, yeah, jig looks very inviting. Definitely think, uh, I think Fusil would have been a little bit better than the last move, but uh, in terms of equity anyway, but I can understand why you'd want to you'd be focused on that top right because that's the obvious lane for sevens that are going to score better than they were elsewhere, but yeah. But so uh, yeah, Jig goes down 39 points, keeping the blank there. And another pretty good pickup for uh, Goldilocks. Is there any bonuses with that one? Looking for a hat trick of bonuses. Might just have uh, missed out, but uh, let's have a good look. Study the board, see if there's anything. Don't think there's any seven, certainly. So, yeah. Need an E for loosener. Uh, a couple of ones with a C and a B, but that's that's a lot. So, it doesn't look like there's anything. But a uh, pretty good wreck to... Uh, to be hit, hitting something next turn, hopefully. Still got that uh, S spot in the bottom right. And uh, yeah, it's done for cons to uh, get a score, which is fair enough. Uh, Tag Ham's uh, racks improved quite a bit. I know there's uh, I can see a 7 straight away with that one. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, well, there's a couple of 7 straight, well, 3. <laughs> Three I can see almost immediately. Uh, for some reason, the first one that popped into my head was Foul Ditch, uh, which you know is something, uh, yeah, it's a long winded historical world. Um, Foul Ditch. The right of the lord of a manor to graze a tenant's sheep in folds on his land in order to renew it. There you go. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of easy ones like Flagged. Uh, making it Eld, for instance. So, yeah. Um, or you could play it above, possibly. Uh, maybe not. No, it doesn't quite fit above. Um, but Faldage would go nicely, although it does it would create a big... Uh, well, it could create a triple letter spot, but it's not a big deal. But yeah, Flagged. It's looking pretty... Uh, Pretty good, I guess. See if there's anything else you can think of. Let us know in chat. And of course, uh, Fangled and Flanged. The other ones, but uh, yeah, he's gone for the more aggressive option of Faldage uh, for 78. I think I might have played Flag, to be honest, but at least Flag score 12, 14, 20, 3. 77 for flags from J2. I think I prefer that, to be honest. I think that's better. One point difference, but I don't know how much foul did you scored uh, if you played it um, from G5, making Dell all on gem. Uh, and I'm too, too born idle to work out the maths, but. It seems a little bit unnecessary to play a foul ditch up there. Um, gives, uh, I mean, that's quite a, it's it's a harder spot to hit where he's played foul ditch because it has to end in a vowel more or less. I mean, uh, maybe I E R ones would hit pretty well above Dreamier, making it E R R E, but it's hard to hit up there, and also you've got to potential for you giving more floaters back for your opponent and also have rubbish like with Fluey and it upgrades it to a decent score and also could could have played from A1 and then 
you know, the board's wide open, you have no control over it, so you open up to, it makes the board a lot more wide open by playing at the top left. So. Uh, maybe didn't want to go for a uh, kind of closed strategic game, I don't know, but I would have definitely played flagged from J2. So, uh, interesting how the games can completely change on little things that are fairly inconsequential, inc really. So, with this rack, 40 points difference. UK lead by uh, 329 to 289. Uh, no 7s with this rack. Uh, there is an 8 with a C, but obviously we didn't see the board. So, to see if you can find the, the, the 8 letter anagram with a C. Fairly straightforward rack, otherwise, just trying to get rid of that. Three of V, V or N would be the ideal to get rid of, or just V and N. Um, let's have a look at the unseen tiles. The stage, a little bit consonant heavy. So yeah, just gone for Vin. Which is fair enough. One of those situations where it's a little bit tricky because with with the score line, uh, Paul Allen on the left, uh, forty points ahead. You might want to kind of you're in that sort of in between score line where you're not sure whether to stick or twist. You don't know whether to like go for something like Vin, and then you're kind of a little bit reliant on picking up a bonus or kind of score more and try and grind out a victory and get your lead above that that forty points. So you're sixty, seventy ahead, so you can absorb a bonus. So there's different ways of playing it, but. Uh, The lead's going to come down pretty quickly because um, I can see there's, there's a nice spot for B2. You can play a rainy, and that's going to score 40 plus. It's going to basically level the scores, although the, the leave is horrible, but uh, W or U, but it's going to score well. Um, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's certainly a threat, that B, uh, B2 line. You can, X is still still unseen, so that's definitely a hot spot. Um, so probably Paul Allen, or Tag Hand, really thinking about that, considering that that if he does try and outrun, then he's not necessarily outrunning sort of those sorts of players anywhere. I mean, he would out outrun those sorts of players, but he wouldn't. Outrun a bonus and those other players. So he's gone the sort of more aggressive route of trying to outscore rather than kind of defend the lead. Oh, that's a bit of a miss. Yeah, Rainey's certainly better than that, I think. It certainly scores a lot more. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I think that uh, that sort of little bit of a, a, a gambit from Paul is going to work out. Uh, he doesn't have any sevens, but uh, that A looks inviting. So yeah, down goes Capstone. Uh, other anagram was uh, Open Cast, but it didn't fit. So down goes that. Uh, so 89 points the difference. Eighty-nine points the difference, and looking pretty bleak is Yao not a better move? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think Yao's better. Yeah, it's definitely Yao's better um, from F two. So lots of options. Rainy scores a bit more, but much much worse leave. Um, but yeah, oh. Owen was pretty bad, I think, mean, to be fair. But uh, I don't think it really mattered, given that uh, Paul had picking out, picking out to his uh, to his nice leave. I think he liked Stone, so he picked out CP, but he still had a bonus. So there you go. Um, not nothing to be done really. Um, ooh, had a Paul had another bonus on this rack. Um, didn't play, but 
He has nice seven letter words. I think it means something to do with stained glass. Uh, stained glass in France. French word. Uh, nice seven letter word, but uh, yeah, it didn't play anywhere. One of those where the times you get this, this seven letter word, the number of times it'll actually play on the board of pretty minimal because you haven't uh, words that start with a V or you know ending with an X it's pretty tricky to fit them in on boards but uh, it would have been sweet anyway to have played it so yeah one in the bag so let's have a look at the unseen see if there's any threats that Paul has to worry about realistically he's probably going to outrun uh, if he wants to um, let you what what uh, Goldilocks could hit with these unseen. Um, anything through that T? Mm. Some sort of weird overlap through the the G row. I don't know. It's uh, pretty slim pickings, I would think. I think I'd just, just be looking for a high high scoring move and uh, getting on with it. But uh, I know Paul is very uh, methodical. Particularly in the, the pre end games and end games. It's kind of difficult to use the V and the X together, I think. So yeah, kind of maybe harder than I thought to outrun. I mean, you could play mucks or mix. Uh, I guess you could play maybe uh, maxi mixed. Uh, massive players with the X, not really. Just played XI. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Interesting option, uh, playing XI um, with the uh, Uni Iron scene, so it's going to give some back, but I guess maybe you might have seen some sort of unlikely bonus through the P, or, well, not through the P, but through the I, maybe, I don't know. I didn't really see anything myself, but uh, yeah, so we'll have a look through Zizifer, see if there's anything in there. So, The T was in the bag. Let's see if there was anything uh, sub anagram match. Uh, nope, nothing. The only possible eight is Rutterlins, but it doesn't fit. Uh, See if there's any sevens with unseen. Enthrall with one L. Uh, that doesn't fit. Does it? Nope. Uh -huh. oh. So yeah, um, so yeah, the posh, uh, posh seven letter word, French word for glass. Um, Vitro, uh, V R uh, V I T R A U X. Just in case anybody was interested. Uh, yeah, nothing through the U I. I don't think there was any potential bonuses uh, there. So for uh, Goldilocks. So yeah, I'll just double check what Vitro means. Yeah, yes. Vitro or vitrail. So a lot of people probably know vitrail. Uh, it just means stained glass, the French word. And vitrail doesn't take an S, that's why, because it's kind of vitro and vitrail, the kind of singular and plural forms or whatever. So there you go. 
So yeah, it's going to be a win for uh, for Tag Hair here, Paul Allen, representing the UK team. Uh, just need to play a legitimate word here, uh, which I'm sure he'll do. He'll probably play ultra safe with VAT and Vint or something. I'm expecting. Uh, don't mind the yo-yoing on the in the chat with the coming back and forth from the server. Came and tipped off with uh, Rick's word. Uh, yeah, yeah, he played VAT and Vince, so that's fine. So yeah, game over. Well done, uh, hold on, So we'll have a look at that game. Being tipped off with Rick's uh, Faziak. Let's have a look at that one. Okay, so this is uh, Mike's Touch is uh, 82 behind, uh, representing South Africa. 82. Um, I'm sitting there with a blank, but um, if there are any bonuses, it's probably not worth playing. There's still a blank to come. Not much uh, scoring potential. I guess you could. There's test drill from uh, A7, but is it worth it? Yeah, I, I don't think I, I don't think there's any point. Maybe there was play, a point in playing test drill. I don't know, but probably not. It probably doesn't score enough to. Are you pretty still down by ten or so? So you've got to go out next turn and outscore what have they done. And, but having said that, given Rick's rack now, that might have been it. Might have won um, because you can score a fair bit on this this line, and Rick doesn't have any letters to go down this side. Although, yeah, I mean, I mean, Rick. It's a tough situation for Rick now, though, because he's fifty-eight up, but he can't block. Um, you can't block everything. I mean, two blanks. Um, there's so many things you could worry about. I mean, there's this line A2 is pretty much always going to kill you, I think. Um, so maybe not worry about that one too much. Um, or maybe you should worry about it, I don't know. But there's probably stuff that could hit down A2 or yeah, A2. Um, let's have a look. Um, there are no um, hooks for E2, um, like Spar or Opa. So I would need a blank, but even still, it's not that restrictive, I guess, if you use it all. Um, like A, O pattern. A lot of things would still hit, but would, uh, what would hit from there? A and O. Uh, or D. R or something like that. This it is pretty tricky, I guess, to hit. Um, this A7 line probably going to hit quite a lot with what's unseen. Um, pretty much always going to be a bonus there. This last one, 14A. Um, hmm. So you got DAP. Um, DAP and DEP. So yeah, the, again, the, this this column here is going to hit pretty much always. Um, A7 most of the time, once in a blue moon, A2. So those are the different diff, different risks, I guess. So Rick's just gone for him jumping off the one tile, which makes sense. He can't probably outrun those bonuses if he plays off more because his, his rack wasn't was too restrictive. So it makes sense just to play up one tile, um, cash the V in, and you notice that if, if Midas touch on this turn, if he opens, if he, if, if he hits one of those lanes, A7 or A14 now, he knows it's going to give away a triple lane. So he knows that if Midas bonus is now, he's going to win. Uh, you know, Rick's going to win basically, because it's only going to tie the scores at best, and it won't even do that with the blanks. And the one point is 
Oh, Rick should be fine in that scenario. Um, but maybe one of those situations where you might have to drop a tile off here um, from Midas's perspective. Let's have a look at the unseen. I mean, we, we saw that um, Rick had a... Um, I, think it, I think there was ED in the bag. Um, so... Um, so, yeah, none of the, none of the bonuses, um, so yeah, um, Rick hasn't got a bonus, we know that. Uh, probably the D would be a better pickup for, uh, D would be a good pickup for Midas, he probably needs to assume he picks up the D and work back from there and see what, how he can score with his one tile. And he might even need to burn a blank, but probably not, but might even need to burn a blank and hope he picks the D. That might be his his way of winning, basically. I don't think he can win by just playing a bonus on this move. Um so yeah, I think you need to play a tile off, score as much as you can, pick the D. Uh and if he if he needs to play a blank off, then yeah. So you left in the E in the blank uh, E in the bag. Um, what else could you? You could have hoped for an N in the bag, but what? By playing that bonus, what is he hoping to pick up? Basically, what is he hoping to pick up that would give him a win? Because he knows, it's like, if, if there's an I in the if. If it, Rick has the eye, then he's going to do something like that and win. So what's he? What's he trying to? What's he hoping for uh, in the bag? The D. They get plays dissolve. But that's not enough. So I don't see how that how a bonus ever wins in that situation. And that's probably a, le a lesser scoring bonus anyway. If he plays in a seven, probably scores a little bit more. Or about the same, and takes out that Q spot. So I don't, I don't know how we can ever win from there. To be honest, it's one of the. You'd have to quackle again or uh, use the leaves to see um, how you can win it. But my my instinct is that he has to 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 win there. He has to play off a tile. That's my instinct. I mean, he, he still he still might be zero percent, but my instinct is he needs to play off a tile. But uh, yeah, I mean, it probably doesn't work out any better. But see, I think the the E in the E was in the bag, so it probably didn't really. He probably needed the D in the bag, um, and then. Hit, uh, hit, a, hit the D with the, the triple letter on the right, or the D where Rick played it with Unrid. Um, well, there you go. Interesting situation. I say I don't think I don't think she's playing the bonus ever wins, but maybe just playing on one off doesn't win either. So there you go. Maybe a zero percent, whatever you do. Um. If you just play off the blank, the most you can score with Zuppers is 16. Um, maybe if there was a big spot for the blank to score like 25 or 30, that would totally be worth it. But I can't see anything. I think Zupper is, Zuppers is the best. The thing with playing off a blank is that means you're going to score more when you do bonus on your next, when you bonus out, because one of your tiles is actually worth a point or two instead of zero. So that improves your sequence by a few points, but still might not be enough. I mean, the rack was probably flexible enough anyway, but and uh, interesting situation. So let's. Uh, so anyway, that was a win for the UK. Let's uh, have a look. Uh, find any interesting games? Let me know. Uh, let's have a look at this one. It's a pretty close game. Let's play it, uh, start splinted from Natalie. So let's have a look at the 
the list of turns. So we've had in darts and splinted from Natalie uh, Picaroon, very nice, and Belabor from Goldilocks. Uh, Goldilocks to go. 36 behind, but uh, it's on turn, so even game more or less. Getting a bit boxy in the middle with the, the way the board's shaped. <laughs> Could be uh, getting pretty awkward uh, until somebody kind of plays out to one of the triples or whatever. K KWA, uh, K A W, sorry, uh, looks inviting. Uh, takes the A hook. Well, I'm not sure you can, uh, Goldilocks can do too much with that. Pretty uh, powerful rack, apart from. Pretty, we'd love to get rid of that FE, I think. But, uh, yeah, the rest of the rack's lovely. Play EF and FOB EM. Uh, 19. If the, if the board was a little bit more open, uh, it might be worth doing something like that, but um, you might even be best looking for a kind of uh, hoping you can get a, a nine letter word under that ER. Uh, uh, or you can try and set something up. It's difficult, difficult one. Could go out all out and open something, uh, or you could just take the points, cash in the C H and the F. If, if there's any way of doing that, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the unseen. See if there's anything special. Yeah, it looks fairly standard. Kind of what you'd expect, more or less. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm tempted just because I like the to try and be a bit of a bit of a smart ass by playing EF, and it's such a lovely leave. Chase is such a lovely leave, but uh, I'm not sure it really has a great deal of value on this board. I mean, it's obviously it's still a lovely leave, but it's it, the the value of the of any leave is diminished on this board because of any bonus you leave is diminished because it's not that great, but. You've got so many things you can hit, I guess. Um, I mean, you can try and open, but yeah, it's just gone for it's just gone for a score basically uh, with chiefs. Um, as you can see, it's going to give points back basically. Uh, You'll see a four-letter word come down pretty uh, sharpish. Uh, Akai. Um, Akai is a, a two-p word, whatever that is. Uh, very found in the Brazilian rainforest. Uh, Akai. That would solve the wreck. Or good old Scrabble classic of Acia, A E C I A. Some of the things that come down. And um, that chafe spot has really helped uh, balance it, although to be fair, um, or AUA would have probably come down anyway, or maybe um, the Q looks helpful, like uh, so, like Qual or something like that. Uh, we just got reasonably well. But yeah, um, turning, over, turning over the tiles has worked out for uh, Goldilocks, picked out a blank. It's also got the, the uh, WU, which isn't pretty, but um, it's just a case of uh, <coughs> do any other bonuses play? There's lots of uh, sevens I can see, but uh, that's Sunwise, Unsinew, uh, for instance, but uh, not sure anything's going to fit uh, on that uh, uh, third column. Oh wait, um, ooh, that H, yeah, that could work. Yeah, yeah, there's a nice one through the H. Um, 
um, which Akai has just made even better because um, it doesn't block it. You've got to. Uh, oh, yeah. That's it. Unwished or unwishes. Nicely played. 99 points and then another 5 for the challenge. Yep, yeah, well played. I'd have probably gone with unwished just because it sounds more. But yeah, unwishes is good too. Unwished would have worked. But uh, both the same in terms of, uh, in terms of score. Unwished sounds a little bit uh, safer, but I guess yeah, as long as you know the words, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. So yeah, that's a huge swing. So you worked out that uh, turn over tiles with chips. Picked out the blank and got the uh, 99 point bonus. With the f extra 5 to drag things out. So it's an 86 point game now. Uh, well in favour of South African side. Goldilocks. And uh, <laughs> I like it. God, gone for the uh, jugular. There's uh, Natalie. No messing about. Uh, can't do much with that triple word. So let's open up another one. Uh, setting up Avenue. Um, had one of the last three A's. And uh, Goldilocks does not have an A. So it could definitely work out. Um, very difficult to block. The V makes it impossible to completely block. Um, I mean, what do you do? I mean... You could play VUG, V U double G, but that doesn't block it completely. It makes it very inaccessible, but it's still it's still there, available. Um, and you get into a situation where you kind of um, your opponent's dictating the game if you're trying to block it with VUG. If your opponent then goes up here and they've still got the A, do you then do you then go back and try and block it even more? Um, for no points, it's you could get stuck uh, chasing things. So yeah, it makes sense to uh, to just take the points with gluten. And uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good uh, opening from uh, now. Um, would have been nice if she picked out a bonus, but um, to be. Um, so yeah, it would have been fun if you'd picked out something with a bonus, make it interesting. Um, see if there's anything. There's lots of lots of big pointy tiles. So really, even a big Z or X player would have been great. Um, would have caught a right up. Um, still would have been behind, but would have would have caught that score with a bonus, and then anything could happen really. So difficult situation. Do you take the uh, the avenue now, or do you play somewhere else? And if you play somewhere else, what else do you do? Yeah, it's just gone for that. Um, and uh, the, the good thing is, you play a few tiles off because um, you're trying to extend the game, basically. So, uh, Goldilocks again got the dilemma of do they do anything about any of the setups, or they just play their own game, try and outscore, outrun? The uh, set's going to help to uh, to score certainly. And yeah, Zig goes down 46, uh, 47. Ooh. So let me picked out HY. Is there anything in there? Because she needs a the the bonus needs to be with a. With something like an H or Y, but I don't think there's anything, and that's probably uh, probably going to end the game realistically, unless uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's hair is good, but uh, yeah, I might have trying to go longer, but I'm not sure if there's anything that really that really really worked. Cause, um, might have needed to try and uh, hit the the double letter. Um, with an H or Y, but I'm not sure if there's anything possible. Uh, like Earthy. Yeah, Earthy would have worked, yeah. I think Earthy was the player there. I think you're just going to give up the chance, give up the hope, um, give up getting two bonuses. Go for Earthy, get as 
close as you can, then hope you outvote us. That's basically the way to win. Um, earthy um, means there's six in the bag. Your opponent probably probably happy with their life now that the. I mean, what earthy was another uh, so it's four, five, six, eighteen. So seventy-two for earthy, I think. Um, so it brings you three, five, eight. You're still pretty much out of it, but um, it brings you within kind of spitting distance, I guess. Um, and you never, you never know. You might hit some a massive um, play under the O one after Earthy. You might hit, you might have a massive play on a O one, and your opponent plays Yaiti or whatever, trying to block, and you have some major five way overlap. You know these, it's still within but within reason. Um, is there any big letters left? I mean, there's still an X, so you might hit something massive with the X. Uh, I'm not sure I really agree with Yaiti. I think, like, why would you do that, <laughs> to be honest? But, uh, it's like you suddenly decided to try and block with, uh, no. Uh, which could easily make the play a lot worse, to be honest, but. Um, look here. See, and Natalie's really neat. Uh, I think Earthy would have been a lot better, but. So the other way you win with Earthy is you play it Earthy, you then catch in the X, then you hit the big bonus to go out with. You don't need to like Earthy hit the big bonus. You could hit a big 40, 50 point player and then bonus out. So there's, you did, it's a plausible way to win. Whereas um, here, or you could basically hit Earthy bonus. EX or something for 30 odd. There's another way you win. So there's more ways to win with Earthy, I think, but. Um, or Hearty, whatever. Yeah, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, just Earthy. Hearty wouldn't work. Wouldn't work as well, rather. I guess you could also set up the X play um, from Avenue. So. Um, let me think. How would that work? What would it Heter or something? Play Heter and so um, from here from E one. You could do that. Uh, sorry, I'll tell if I didn't make up a word. Um, trying to think of a word. Uh, three. No, that wouldn't work. Basically, you put an E here from F one or E here and create a huge X spot. That would be another thing you could do. Give yourself an option. So then you go. Uh, you play your avenue hook, get your huge X play, and get a bonus in whatever order. But yeah, it's a uh, very difficult split position for an Atom Lightning now. Um, it's very difficult to, to off the 80, that's the good one. Good thing it does is. You can't really play this bottom right corner without killing um, everything above it. I mean, you can still play from like D15, but if you play something in this bottom right corner, then you can't get a big play down. I mean, it wasn't totally secure because, like, Yaiti, you could get hit with something big down there. So, yeah. But, uh, it's been an interesting game, uh, even though it's been a bit of a blowout in the end, but, uh, venue is nice, so, uh, Unwishes, of course, very nice. You got, uh, Be Labour, so a bit of a nice play, pick a room, lots of nice players in this one. Even though it's a big, big margin in the end, but, uh, could have gone. It was still a live game until the last few moves, so. It's another one for South Africa, but uh, let's have a look at some other games going on. Again, if you find any uh, interesting end games or 
close games, whatever, just let me know in the chat. I'll uh, go and watch that one with everybody else. Ooh, that's a one-sided game. So yeah, I'll leave that one. Big win for uh, South Africa in that one. Yeah, not see much of High Tower. Yeah, watch this one for a bit. Looks more or less even. Um, so we've just seen uh, Tiresome and Realize from uh, High Tower, both using the blanks, but uh, minus a touch. Should have something to come back with you. So there's uh, Umbring and uh, M Brewing as well. Uh, both worked with that M. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, 24 the difference. Uh, UK trailing this one. And uh, oh, well, that's a pretty handy pickup as well. Uh, oh no, uh, he had eight guys. Eight guys was uh, bonus with that rack from High Tower. Easy to overlook because you've got the Z and the massive play, but uh, yeah, eight guys. Um, eight guys just talk to an atheist basically. Uh, Would have gone down um, with Ag or. Making uh, from B2, making X. Uh, and that would have been another 20 points or so. So, yeah, a uh, bit of a miss. Not a huge one, but a bit of a miss. Probably like 15, pretty custom, like 15 points, because positionally, Athe Athe Eyes was pretty, was a few points worse than Zine, but, but yeah, definitely a bit of a miss. But uh, keeps things in close. Um, there's Quick response from Midas touch of uh, Zuid. A yeah, nice parallel high toe with wheat, so 48 points. Stretching that lead to 63. Oh, excuse me. Uh, not the best of uh, racks for Midas touch. He has got a nice dump of. Um, you can play gate, G A I double T. It's actually spelled out on, the, on mine. Um, you can have gate with double T. Um, pretty low, uh, pretty uh, obscure, really, word, I guess. So, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if, if uh, my just touch didn't know it. Um, one of those is definitely a uh, top, very, very sort of um, world championship contender player with no, but uh, going to be hit and miss with other players because it's, it's not a very useful word most of the time, but. Definitely one of those that comes in handy, um, particularly when you've got three T's. So yeah, gate with the double T would be pretty handy. Um, you can even leave off the, the, the extra T, but because um, my just already has another T to go with it, I would probably play both T's. Um, if, if he had less T's, then it might be worth I mean, there are three S's to come, so. Um, although, I mean, got, got a. Uh, got her some uh, other virtues to it because um, it leaves a vowel. I mean, it's. Got her is more open to score off, um, which is why I don't like it so much. Um, it's easy to hit the. Uh, much easier to hit the double letter with a consonant, high value consonant, uh, by leaving the A there. If you leave the T there, it restricts um, the scoring. Um, and you kind of, you want it to open things because the board's dying a death. There's, there's that column in there, the second column, B2. Um, there's that column for bonuses. You, you've got either side of unclad, but it's pretty tricky. And uh, likewise with uh, column 14, that's a little, that's tricky to hit anything, but by Playing stuff like Gate or Gotter, you you kind of making your opponent chase chase those sort of openings, so you you're leaving the rest of it untouched, sort of thing. Whereas if you just if you don't open anything, then your opponent's going to try and play something through, say F two. I mean, 
where where Nip has gone down. Um, if you play through that U um, horizontally from like F3, F2, whatever, if you play a word through there, that kills a lot of the board. And if you don't open somewhere else and give them something to block, then then they're going to do that. So they're going to make what's open even worse. So that's why I like gutter or gate, but there's a gate with the two T's is a little bit more obscure and a little bit harder, but uh, would have been a little bit better because it's not giving as many points back. Because you know your opponent's going to take out the triple triple like 99% of the time, so you want to make their score when they're doing that um, less impactful, you know, smaller score. So as I was saying earlier, I mean, um, that play of gone was blocked. Um, that that second column. So it was a similar principle of what I was saying earlier. If you play through the U in unclad, it's that sort of principle. You you kind of playing across to block it in an indirect way. It's very difficult to block it by playing in the second column because then you open up the triple word. So so it's those kind of indirect blocks which are it's a quite a high level play. Um, so just a quick X dump from my touch. Keeping the lead down to uh, 33. It's uh, going to be tricky now for for um, I such a usually the Q be bad, but uh, having Cade is brilliant. 38, 38 points doesn't open up any sort of bonuses, so it's bonus lane, so that's perfect for high tower and to uh, see Midas touch doesn't have anything to score with, so it's going to struggle to stay in touch. Even if he does get a bonus layer, which is the options are getting fewer and fewer, but they're still those um those elusive S's are still about, so there's still life if uh if you can turn over some tiles, try and open something up in this top left. If he picks out some S's, um this fourteen column, you've got two or three S's, then the way it's lined up with verbs and N Y S and all that. It's certainly better, but I don't agree with La. It just doesn't score enough. You, you've got a score. Basically, it's stay in touch, and La doesn't do that, and he scores three points. So there's basically no threat. Um, like, all Hightower has to do now is just score 25, 30 points, and they're 100 up. So your bonus is relevant. You, you can't catch up. I mean, as it happens, Hightower has a nice... Nice play with the J. You can he has um, Jism from L1, so that would score well. He doesn't even have to worry about Allah or some uh, verbs and NYS type multiple uh, player. But he's gone for Jism, um, making NYS. It's a little bit unnecessary because that does open up a triple, so it's not necessarily um, that much safer, but. Six and two threes. I mean, Jism in from L one um, scores forty two, keeps the S back. Uh, so yeah, it's fair enough. I want to be a bit more blocky, but again, I'm not totally sure it's more defensive because you can still hit triples in the column fifteen. Just uh, as we can see, uh, not with uh, that rack particularly. I mean, that was the other thing. Um, that uh, my just touch need to do was to just turn over tiles. If he leave, leaves two, like three vowel, uh, three consonants or four consonants, whatever, he just needs to turn stuff over, score, and hope for a miracle. Miracle pick, not try and you're not gonna win the game with three and five point words and kind of cheese your way. Like trying to do it cutely, you can't. You're too far behind to be sort of managing. Your rack very sort of carefully, and you know, leaving. You know, you just need to go for it, basically. So yeah, I nicely sort of closed that off by high tower anyway to uh, clinch this one. Hundred and twenty three up. Um, to be fair, um, yeah, I just touched not really picked up anything to go. Uh, in, in the sort of areas where he needed to go, he needed to pick up S's, but he needed to some vowels as well but could have played a little bit better but 
it's not going to make any difference. It's not had the letters to uh, to chase this really. Um, that miss of ATIs doesn't cost High Tower anything. Uh, he managed to to control the ball after that uh, board after that. Um, my just touch kind of chasing the game. Um, but kind of you need to just score and that's one of the things in Scrabble is you, you're nearly always um, sort of halfway onwards. You, there's always nearly always one player that's like sort of forty fifty up, and how you play that is so sort of, so kind of tricky. Yeah, I think you can either shut the board down completely um, if you if you're ahead, obviously, try and shut the board down down completely, or you can you can kind of balance that with scoring so you outrun your opponent even if they do bonus or you can just go completely out for out scoring don't worry about any bonuses just just score basically so there's lots of ways to there's usually like the best players can do a balance or play towards the board basically so if the board a lot, a lot, a lot of boards in collins don't allow you to uh, to completely shut them down there's always going to be some threats so it's, so it's always situational but uh, so well played by Hightower, you kid. Uh, had a bit of a rough run yesterday. Um, I think it was two and eight yesterday, so he led to get some more wins today under his belt. So down goes Aero, just the ST, and uh, I think one left on uh, Hightower's rack with the eye. So we'll see ST go down pretty soon, I would think, somewhere. And I'll conclude that game. Hopefully before uh, the time penalty kicks in. No, oh, no, just gone for the S. Just played off the S. Uh, probably better to play off ST, but I'm not sure. Maybe it isn't. <laughs> Depending on how much it scores. Maybe maybe he's going for another strategy. Maybe the the winning strategy here is to uh, hope uh, High Tower disconnects or something like that <laughs> and runs out of, and forfeits on time or something. I don't know. Maybe that was the strategy. But anyway, 449 to High Tower, Stu Harkness, and 350 to uh, Midas Touch, the uh, Welland Jaggles from South Africa. So that's a win for uh, for uh, for the UK. Let's have a look at another game. I think we're probably multi through round 18 now. Um, Let's have a look to catch uh, one of the Collins games, maybe. No, no, we're in a it's an even game. Let's have a look at this one. Pretty good. Uh, Colin to go. Six points behind against uh, Diana, South Africa. Yuma, three. Uh, a bit of scoring potential there with the ZNX. Uh, I think we're going to see Zax go down pretty soon in that bottom left corner. There it goes, 70 points. Painful. Uh, not the best of pickups from uh, Vs and. Yeah, not good when your only vowel is a U. Uh, particularly when you've got the Vs and some hard consonants go with it. Let's have a look at that, uh, that top left um, triple triple. There could be a few things that go there. We're trying to make a few notes. What would fit in there, do we think? It's got to be uh, some sort of. It's got to be a few, surely. A few nice nine timers that would go now. Let me cheat, as usual. What does this look? Where does it look? Okay. Let's have a look at some possible nine timers in the top. Ooh, 124 words. But, uh, some of these will probably be too long, but uh, let's have a look. Yeah, some of them are too long, but uh, like familiarization, yeah. I'm sure that there's a good chance of that. That would be, uh, yeah. I guess you could uh, extend it to familiar and then nice. Uh, Eight letter plus seven letter extension bonus. That'll be uh, one for your grandchildren. 
We got lots and lots of uh, possibilities. See if uh, anybody can get anywhere close to one. <clears throat> yeah, a quick change from uh, Diana. Not the best look with the tiles since we've joined this one. Uh, Colin. Yeah, just going for the that H I S hook. And, ooh, wow. Uh, that change didn't really work out too well, unfortunately, for Diana. Uh, Diana, sorry. Uh, the a few uh, few of the uh, triple triples involve a C and a S, uh, like Camisade, Camisado, Camisias, Camisol. Uh, uh, yeah, C could be useful. So uh, yeah, not on this wreck particularly. It's a pretty uh, awful uh, set of letters, to be fair. I think uh, yeah, just gone for Cami. Uh, I'm not sure it was really worth doing that. Um, I think I would have probably played. Uh, probably just played Sky or Skier. How they pronounce that word? Scry with a K, whatever. I think those are where better better players using gulps. I mean, don't particularly want to play there, but uh, yeah, you've got to you've got to try and score some points and not leave yourself like six consoles. But uh, I mean, that top left is actually uh, you can the players with a K anywhere. Cami, you're going to play something there. You do uh, Cami K. Uh, well, uh, yeah, kind of slightly, uh, slightly uh, sad that that uh, that, that double, um, triple triple uh, line was uh, foiled because there's a lot of uh, potential there. Uh, say over a hundred hundred words fitted, but uh, obviously some of them were fifteen letters, so not um, very likely. But yeah, a lot of potential. And because because three of the letters are already there, I mean, in eight letter. Nine timers when three of the letters are already there. I mean, you only need five letters, the right five letters out of seven. It's not like where where you, where you're hitting a bonus where you need all seven to be right. When you only need to hit the right five letters, it makes it a lot more um, possible, you know, a lot more likely. Because you only need, you know, five of the right letters instead of all seven. It's like lottery, where you, you know, you're a lot more likely to get three or four numbers than all six. So. And yeah, I don't, I've never played the Euro Lottery, so I don't care about all the extra balls and whatnot. I'm a traditionalist. Not that I've ever played it. I think I played it once on my birthday, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I only gamble if I'm going to win, basically. That's my uh, theory. Like, so yeah, 101 the difference here. UK player Colin on the right to play. Uh, Three T's, but uh, not not nice, but uh, not too much of an issue. Uh, although not great for uh, you can't play it underneath that O with the T because O T is no good, so a little bit restricted to what he can do. Uh, I guess he could play it. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's rather restricted with this. Uh, they just play through the N and joined, I guess. But I guess you're a little bit worried about the uh, the double double from the R, the E four, so you maybe mess that up. Something to do. Okay, good for Arette. It's a nice sort of balancing wreck. Uh, nice, nice balancing move. Gets rid of the, the triple T. And. Uh, down goes the Q, QIS, quickly from uh, Diana. So that's, brings it back um, just under 80 difference now. Because QIS did, did uh, ruin the uh, double double, but not much you can do with a Q really. You have to, had to take the 36 points in there. 
it's uh, going to open things up a little bit, um, presumably, when if they're uh, calling players to the right of that queue with QI, you, you're always going to open, it's going to open up the board a bit. Um, Aret, one of the good things about Aret was it did obscure another uh, Gov, uh, Gov S hook. Um, so, so any any bonuses under uh, Aret are going to be pretty. You're going to have to start with vowels, and they're going to open up quite a lot. So, very hard to hit, and going to give away quite a lot. But, um, and yeah, nice play from Colin Whited. Forgotten all about that W at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, nice 51 points. Uh, stretch the lead to 128. Uh, got the blank as uh, as humor. Um, still not the greatest combinations to go with it, unfortunately. Yeah, pretty pretty ugly combination. Um, yeah, frustrating uh, wrecks from what we've seen. Uh, can't see anything fantastic. I guess there's yeah. Can't see anything at all, really. Uh, I guess you're looking at Kef and Fugs. It's uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty uh, mediocre, I guess. Um, yeah, not the greatest. Uh, Um, yeah, gone for bite, but uh, has played D E T, which um, I don't think it's been added since then. No, it's not. So yeah, this is D uh, E T is a forty, so that might be coming off. Uh, I'm trying to remember what uh, what was on there. F F E K F N K wasn't it? So it could have played um kind. I think F N yeah kind could have been played there. But yeah, it's yeah pretty str it's a struggle. Uh, awkward wrecks for you, my so um I'm gonna leave this one move it to another game. Um, say nothing much. Uh, not th things just not flowing for Yuma when we've been watching, unfortunately. So we'll uh, catch another game. Let's have a look. Uh, see what's going on. Um, I think we might be into the last round by now. So let's have a see um, what the latest standings. What we're up to? Yeah, we're up to. Uh, we've, we missed uh, round 18, so I'll go through the the round 19 teams. And so after round 19. Um, to say that we've missed, we skipped around. So, so um, it's now 120 to 70. So, um, so it's 14 six since the last update. So I'll change that for you. So it's uh, 120 to 70. There we go. Um, so yeah, and uh, let's have a look at the. Uh, the uh, individual standings. So, so we've still got uh, two players with only lost three games, which is amazing. Sixteen and three. Uh, Paul Allen and Paul Gallen, uh, the sound alikes from the UK. And uh, Chris Vickery, uh, just a game behind on fifteen and four for the UK. And we've got two players um, from South Africa and twelve and seven. Uh, Harry Wiggins and Stephen Goods. And uh, also on 12 and 7 from the UK though, uh, Rick Kersey and Andrew Goodwin. Um, any other players with a positive record? Uh, Natalie Zolte and Chris, uh, Colin Northmore on 11 8. Okay, so that takes you through all those, all those games. So we're into the final round. So this is the final round. Just uh, catching things up, uh, watching uh, Andrew Goodwin against Ike Corby. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so uh, lots of blue tiles on this one, but uh, it's not like Othello. It's just about how much, how many points you've got, not how many uh, letters you've played. But uh, yeah, lots of blue. But uh, only uh, 33 in it. If you do turn over tiles, you then you tend to get 
more of the bad stuff and uh, more of the good stuff like the blanks. So uh, double edged sword. So um, yeah, blank for uh, Andrew here. Also got the F and the K. So the K is not going to be too bad. Um, it's got obvious players of uh, Kith and Kef making Zek in the centre of the board. Um, but there may be other things, maybe bonuses, which obviously would be better still, even. Uh, I think Forks here is good for the over top. Um. Oh no, it's not. Just Fork here. My bad. Oh wait, yeah, sorry. I've still got a pattern match. Don't. Yeah, Forks here. Forks is good. Ooh, lots of, uh, quite a few other, three other. Three other bonuses through that all on um, the really score a great deal. So might you, it's probably not even worth to be honest uh, with Kith and keeping the blank back. It's probably maybe better than something like Forks here. Uh, you got Kith at th uh, 36. And that rack leave is worth 30 plus, so yeah. But uh, maybe other things. Let's see if we can read through that D and the E. Uh, it could def definitely be a possibility. Definitely a limited look for it. For the yeah, there's, there's stuff through the E. Uh, three, in fact. Um, so Andrew's just gone for Forks here, but uh, yeah, there was three bonuses. Three bonuses through the E. Uh, one actually doubles, um, triple doubles the uh, the F. You could have Surf like. Uh, so surf like would have been very nice um, with, the, with the tripled F, uh, but also fern like and uh, fleckier were also possibilities. But uh, Foxy is pretty good. If you don't see any of the others, then obviously you'd go Foxy. I think Kith is more or less the same. I think it's just as good. I think if you don't see Foxy or you don't want to risk it, I think Kith is just as good as well. Um, so yeah, so uh, good lead for Andrew, 98, and a uh, pretty grotty rack for Ike, so let's have a spin through, try and catch lots of games since this last round. Um, so we got the two leaders, um, Tag here, which is Paul Allen, uh, and he looks like he's going to win this game, uh, 112 up. Um, Steve looking good with his blank. Um, so it looks like you've got Flutter, for instance, uh, making FY, uh, using the blank as an F, for instance. That would work. But uh, with seven in the bag, uh, as long as Paul doesn't make any mistakes in his next move and blocks the right things, then um, he's going to have this game. So, yeah. Interesting. He's gone for the Afflutter, um, which kind of blocks everything, so <laughs> kind of defeats. Uh, yeah, I think Flutter is better, um, just to open something. But I guess I don't know. It's it's fairly futile either way, but yeah, you'd rather open up something and give your opponent something to do, I guess. Um, like, uh, let me think if. I mean, there was a chance you could. Um, if you play Flutter here, for instance, there's a chance you could get a bonus on this line um, with uh, with an L. File. Uh, yeah, there's two L's left. So, F Y L E, the, um, your opponent might miss that. Might miss your 7 uh, making file. Or. Uh, what else is the? Um, I think that was it. So, yeah, Fike or Fice. Oh, there is a K. So yeah, Fike was possible, I guess. But so yeah, a little bit defensive, but uh, pretty futile either way, really, realistically. So looks like um, Paul Allen's going to finish with a, a seventeen and three record, but uh, also on on three three only only lost three games was uh, Mitsurugi, um, Paul Gallen. Uh, and Paul Callum's doing well in his last game, 131 up. So it looks like um, 
like uh, Paul Gallen is going to have the best individual record, although both him and Paul Allen are going to be on 17 and 3, which is different spreads, though. Both amazing performances, really. Uh, so it looks, uh, it looks like we had a, a nice uh, nine letter play there from uh, from Goldilocks. Uh, indention. Let's have a look, uh, just to confirm that with a list of moves. So yeah, Indention, yeah, very nice in there. There's Pyranoid, Fletten, uh, multiple overlap with Fletten, very nice. Uh, and Doilies, triple, tri uh, hat trick of bonuses. Goldilocks, not too bad either, and uh, Lighters. Um, and Indention is a nine letter word, but uh, just too much firepower from uh, Paul Gallen. So let's have a quick, 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 quick look at um, Chris Vickery. Uh, it looks like he's finished his game. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, were we watching that game? I'm not sure. So um, was that the last round? Let me just double check. Uh, Chris Vickery, 15. Uh, yeah. So yeah, Chris, this was the last game from Chris, which he uh, won by 58. Have a list of the moves. And yeah, Chris has finished on um, 16 and 4. Again, an amazing record over uh, such high quality uh, competition over 20 games, winning 80% uh, of your matches. Uh, definitely uh, worth a mention that uh, nice play with the double blanks of uh, Sun Hoods um, from Chris. Uh, Conceal and Insecure as well. Uh, tinkles from uh, from Neil uh, after insecure, but I uh, just couldn't claw back the uh, three to one bonuses too much in the end for uh, for Neil. So it's a win for Chris in the UK side. Uh, let's see if any other games going. Uh, uh, pretty much nearly all gone now. See if uh, the South African. A pair of a tiger and Steve G. So it's uh, Harry Wiggins and Stephen Gould. See if see how they've done on their last game. So yeah, so a tiger has won their last game by the looks of things against Rick. Uh, just double check it was their last. Uh, oh no, it wasn't. That was the. Uh, uh, is that right? There's Yaka Tiger. No, that's that was the round 19 game. This is the round 20 game, so. So, yeah, um. Tigers for. Uh, not looking good there. <laughs> uh, look at that un uh, unseen pool. Is there any bonuses in that? And uh, Hightower sitting there with a blank in the 57 lead. So yeah, that's uh, looking like a loss for uh, for a tiger and uh, Harry Wiggins. So let's see how the uh, who the South African player on twelve and seven is doing. So uh, that's uh, Steve G. Uh, looks like their game is finished with that uh, tag hair. Is that is that one the last one? Yeah, it was. This is the last round, so yeah, yeah, we saw that game. Uh, so yeah, um, both the players are so the South African players going to finish on twelve and eight by the looks of it. Um, so yeah, still a good uh, good effort, and um, finishing over uh, fifty percent against a uh, tough UK side. So. Uh, well played to both of those players. So um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's say this is a final round, so we're just finishing things off. So I've been for Andrew there, more or less. Uh, let's have a look, see if any other games going on. They're close. Uh, um, likely. Uh, looks like a win for uh, Rick Akfaziak. 
94 difference. Let's, uh, let's see if there's any uh, major players with a J to <laughs> close the gap and then pick out the blank. Uh, yeah. Not seen anything so far. That could make it uh, make the game a little bit closer. It's a little tricky. I mean, it's not totally done with the the R in Rupert at the top right. You could hit a triple on there, triple word score, but um, but uh, yeah, anywhere else, where do you go? Once that goes, um, where do you go? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and of course, uh, Rick sitting there with a blank very helpfully. Oh, ugly, ugly letters. So yeah, um, thanks so uh, again. Thanks for all the players and uh, all the organisers. Uh, I'll try and uh, make sure I get everybody on as um, James Burley on the computers. Um. I forget to uh, organised it from the uh, South African side. I know, I know the um, South African side initiated all of this, so to uh, well done to it. Well, to everybody who's involved with playing or organising or a bit of both. All very much appreciated. I've always been a, a fan of uh, of team competitions on ISC. Um, but, uh, it's always good to have a. Uh, the thing with with, with um, Scrabble, um, streaming Scrabble, I mean, there's no real reason why it can't do well. Uh, it's no different to any other game. I mean, I watch lots of computer games on Scrabble, um, computer games on stream. Like I've watched Overwatch and um, Fortnite for years. I'm like watching, um, so I'm watching Mountain Blade War, but um, not Warbands. That's the one I've got. Um, Bannerlord. I'm watching that at the moment. Um, this is the one that's got a million people watching at any time. Valorant, which is look crap to be honest, but um, so but I watched all that. I watched um, even um, uh, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. I play that myself on the PS4 downstairs. So all these things. I mean, games can be streamed. There's not, you know, people like watching people playing games. It's, but uh, you need the drama element, that's the thing. And that's the great thing about these uh, competitions is anybody can come along. They don't need to know Scrabble, because most people aren't going to know all the obscure words or, um, you know, they're not going to watch, the, they, they don't know the obscure words, they don't even know the rules that well. I mean, God knows, people watch, enough people watch rugby and American football without having the, the faintest idea of what the rules are. Or in Australia, where you have to invent their own sports. Because uh, they're not very good at everything else. Um, the uh, of things like Aussie rules football. I mean, does anybody who actually watches Aussie rules football actually know all the rules? I mean, so it's like it's drama at the end of the day that makes these things. And uh, so, like, obviously, people who want to watch high quality, they want to watch the best of something. It's like if you want, if you're going to watch a, a sport, football or cricket or whatever. You're gonna watch the best players. You're not gonna, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be attracted to the best players watching them. But then again, you don't want to watch them. Like I don't want to watch uh, Ben Stokes having a net session. It just doesn't interest me. I don't want to watch him in the gym. But I watch him in the ashes. It's about drama. So, uh, and that's what these these sort of tight team formats do. They they create a relatable drama that anybody. With no idea about Scrabble or anything else, can come along and watch and follow the drama, and that's what makes these sort of things. So uh, yeah, that's my uh, kind of rent while well, there's not much going on. Uh, so yeah, it's all about drama for me, and uh, enjoying it. Absolutely enjoy uh, streaming and, and talking about the game. I mean, like for me personally, I I love the game. I don't particularly love uh, anything about uh, anything else uh, to do with the scene or like people or the community and all this. I mean, communities are the same. Whichever game or sport you're on about, like, there'll be good people, there'll be bad people. Um, 
But uh, the game is what makes Scrabble for me. It's what I love about Scrabble. Uh, Scrabble is the ultimate test of like every aspect. So for me, that's the drama. Getting the drama across. Uh, I hope I do as well as I can. Um, obviously, I'm not the ideal, but I do enjoy uh, commentating on games. Uh, even though I've forgotten half the words. So, so yeah, for me, so yeah, I'd love to see more uh, games like this, more competitions like this. To uh, and of course there'll be bigger ones. There'll be, you know, like hopefully um, Canada and Canada and uh, America get it on because um, everybody wants to see America lose. So I'm sure everybody will want to watch that. Um, particularly if Dave Koenig's playing, everybody wants to see him lose. So, so I think that's all the game's gone. Yeah. So uh, let's have a look to see if the standings are up to date, and uh, hopefully all these competitions. Because I mean, this is there's lots of other good things going on at IEC at the moment. I hope this is only the tip of the iceberg. I hope there's a lot more streaming, whether it's me or somebody else, doesn't matter. People need to uh, just get it out there. And enjoy the game, enjoy watching it, enjoy commentating, enjoy playing. That's what it's all about. So, uh, we're just waiting the last few seconds to see the games going. And then I'll give you the final standings and uh, I'll wish you all adieu. Uh, so, here we go. Yeah. Suspense building up nicely. So, yeah, let's get the final score. Uh, I think they're all in. So, uh, yeah, we're just waiting. Any of these refreshes will be coming along. I'm uh, frantically clicking refresh on the standings. And, uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. And thanks for all the help and support. If any, um, I'm always well. I'm always happy to uh, stream or commentate on anything. I don't. I'm not. I don't care whether it's which teams or whatever else. So it's interesting, fun. That's what it's all about, really. Uh, and I've seen. As I say I watch streaming for loads of other games, and you can, streaming can work. No doubt. You just have to keep doing it, basically. Build up an audience, build up the fact that there is actually streaming for Scrabble out there. Make it regular. Just grind and grind like every other streamer has done in the world um, to be to get the thousands and thousands of views that they get, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands in some instances. And you're just going to keep putting it out there. Learn to have fun. Yeah, still waiting on that. Last uh, refresh. There it goes. So here we go. So the final scores. Ooh, that last last round was a bit of a hammering. Uh, nine one to the UK. So here it is. The final standings. UK one hundred and twenty nine. South Africa seventy one. And. Uh, We'll just update that for you, and we'll go through to the uh, individuals. So, we'll mention uh, all the, the top players. So, yeah, the so out of all the UK players, kind of won more or less in that last round. I think, uh, yeah, the only the only South African victory in that last round was uh, Llewellyn Jaggles, I think. Uh, I believe, yeah, that looks right. So, okay, so the the top finisher individually was um, Mitsurugi Paul Gallen. Uh, 17 wins spread a plus 2021. 20, um, just one 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 point off uh, nice 2020, but so uh, there you go. I was ahead of his time. And uh, in second place, also on 17 wins, Paul Allen Tag Ham 1474. He's uh, nicked his uh, username off Mark Nyman. And uh, in third was 16 and four, another brilliant performance, Chris Vickery. Uh, that's Y R A C I V C C the green backwards. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, good mentions to uh, the two top um, South African performers: uh, 
Harry Wiggins at, I, uh, at Tiger and uh, Stephen Grist, uh, Steve G, both on 12 and 8. So, yeah, well done to uh, everybody. Uh, thanks to everybody for playing. And uh, hopefully see everybody around another time when there be another uh, internet tournament on. Uh, lots of uh, things to go. Hopefully, uh, as well as I see uh, uh, Scrabble Go is doing pretty well, I think. Um, lots of things to be coming on that front. So keep an eye out for Scrabble Go. And uh, uh, whatever the platform or game or whatever, just be positive about it. Um, Criticise constructively in uh, where you can, but uh, be positive, whatever it is. ISC, I mean, we all know ISC is not the uh, most aesthetically pleasing, but it is what it is. It does a job, and uh, thousands of people play on there, so what more do you want? And it has a hell of a lot of features. Uh, it does right, kind of remind me of um, my DOS days of computing, but uh, there you go. But, uh, thanks very much for everybody uh, who run it. Thanks to ISC for having us, and uh, thanks everybody for watching. Whether you're watching live or watching on the the recordings on the Twitch or YouTube, and we'll see everybody ne again next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.